not fishing the urn today. Somewhere different for you. Roll the intro. <laughs>
missed that one. I'm clipped up on this rod at 60 meters. The other rod that I have with me is clipped up at 55 meters. And that's, that was a bite. I have no maggots left on my hook. So let's get another one out there. My maggots I put into a vacuum, uh, the vacuum pack bag. They haven't quite woke up yet, so they may as well be dead maggots, but it doesn't make a difference. But the fish still seem to like them. So I'm putting on four at a time. Just fishing four reds. On a three foot hook length, or actually a four foot hook length. Your size 12. Guru feeder special. on the bottom. There's a bit of a toe coming this way from the wind so you have to sink the braid quite quickly otherwise you end up with a false bow in the rod tip. Plus the one disadvantage of using braid it floats, it's too buoyant. You'll not probably see with this camera, but I tension the tip, so the tip's quite, it's not sitting straight, it's just sitting like that there, so there's tension in the tip. That way if there's any loose line, the tip will eventually spring back straight, and you have to adjust. You always want the tip just to be crooked a little bit. You know, you don't want it fucking wrapped around like you're fishing on a river, with a river flowing. You just want a little bit of tension on it. This is the, the Matrix, Fox Matrix feeder braid. On the other rod I have the, the Preston Innovations Reflow feeder braid. These are the two braids for the feeder fishing that I tend to stick with. I did try the Guru stuff. I didn't like it at all. It kept fraying on me. It really wasn't any good. The Guru might have changed that, but I couldn't find, I couldn't get on with it. I even had uh, a Dutch firm sent me some bread. I bought bread from a Dutch guy, and it was it was pretty good, but it was only ten pound breaking strain, so it wasn't really any good for throwing heavy feeders. But for little light feeders, it wasn't so bad. I can't remember the name of it. The Dutch guys, they fish massive big canals. So they're, used, they're the guys that basically pioneered using braid for feeder fishing. Because you're having to reach, you know, you're having to cast easily a hundred meters. You know, easily a hundred meters. And it's just on these big canals like the Ruhr Canal or Rhine Canals, or unless you're able to cast that distance you're not really you're not really going to catch but they were throwing uh, 45 gram distance feeders little rocket feeders so they weren't throwing a heavy feeder you know the Dutch guys come across to Ireland and they the fish it's a similar sort of fishing to them but it's you have to put a lot more bait in the last time I fished in Holland you know, they were, they were telling me I was putting too much bait in, I put in three kilos of crumb. 
for three kilos of ground bed and they were sitting down feeding it too much. That's back when I was match fishing but I don't do that no more so still good to have all those guys as contacts, as friends, you know. Still good to keep in touch with people. I have a couple of Dutch guys that want me to come across to there and fish for pike. But I laughed, I said that if I was going across to Holland, I'd have to bring the wife. And she's always wanted to go to Amsterdam. And there's not really many pike fishing sessions or pike fishing opportunities around Amsterdam. Catch loads of crabs in the wrong place, but I'm not catch too much pike. It's a bit of a drive. You know, you'd be you'd be flying over there. And those guys are all you know, they're all cool, they're all saying, you know, you can use our gear, you can use our boat, blah, 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 come across the fish for this. So, so I, I kind of, but COVID-19's kind of stopped that. Damn you, China, stopping me getting some Dutch pike action. We had a guy come in to talk to us about the, the kitchen in the house. Showed us designs, pretty good, love it. No. Talked to us about the fitted bedrooms for the house again. Lovely ideas, brilliant. We're getting the log burning stove in, hopefully. Hopefully touching wood. Hopefully this month, sometime towards the end of this month. I have a woman that likes to be warm. Actually, when we went to Hawaii for her, for her honeymoon, you know, she wore a hoodie. You know, those times she wore a hoodie in Hawaii. You know, I'm there in shorts and t-shirt and the sweat's bullet now, I mean, she's in a hoodie. I will go back to Hawaii. We've promised ourselves we'll go back for our uh, 10 year anniversary, if she hasn't killed me. It's a beautiful place. I'd love to go back there and do some fishing. We just kind of ran out of time when we were on our honeymoon. You know, I can't really say to the wife, but when we're actually there on our honeymoon, you know, I'm going to disappear for a day and go charter fishing. She might not have seen the funny side of that. There we go, that's better. Nice positive bite, that's what they like. You don't like these wee little niggly, twitchy bites, you want a nice positive. the friggin pike comes and snatches it. Oh, right. Swinging it in for the win. <laughs> and that's the size of them. Happy enough catching them all day. Fish number five. A few moments later. I lost a bream at the net. Not a big bream, maybe two pound. But definitely the biggest thing I've caught today. 
the lifters is on and off. Still feeding nice leisurely pace with the uh, the census gross gardens nor ground bit. Nah, it's off. Fishing a very easy. Sliding running rig. We have a little knot there to catch the buffer the feeder and then a little stopper up the line. And I have noticed that this hook length has been shredded. So hook length needs changed. Which is dead easy with these little quick like swivels you just take the plastic off the end take your oh yeah that's very shredded take your shredded hook length obviously bin it responsibly don't just Chuck it in the damn bushes. Going to show you some clips now of uh, the pike angling bug. Can they got me? So enjoy these clips. It's just a nice, easy one. How to spool up? How to spool up your rods? And how to take mono off your reels really really quickly. Enjoy! Every pike angler at the start of the year absolutely dreads this job. You gotta take the mono from your old reels and replace it. Normally you're pulling it out like that there. It takes forever. Now I'm going to use something a bit more uh, quicker bit speedier shall we say it is a carp d line d spooler you just attach it to a battery drill now i'm going to show you how quick it takes to just take all the mono off of this spool this is a 10,000 shimano spool this line is a nash nash bullet in 20 pound breaking strain so it's 0.4 millimeters you just take it into the the end of your spool and close the spool it locks it into position you take your your spool into there and then you just wind There you go. Completely despooled in uh, double quick time. Another top tip. See when you're taking your old mono off the rails, you have to dispose of the mono responsibly. You have to get rid of it properly. This thing here is dead easy. You just unclip the top. 
like that, the top will pop off. Now this is the cut, this is the bit that you want to be kind of quick with. You want to catch, get your finger under the, the spool, so you have all the line in your finger. And then you take a pair of scissors. And you cut it like that there, that way it's not going to be able to be tangling up wildlife. Of course if you have a fire, you could burn it and destroy it that way. But cutting it up into, this, this is a length of no longer than what, 4 inches. So that's how you get rid of the old mono. I'm throwing this into the recycling bin. Job number two, all pike anglers do not like doing, is putting mono back on their spool. Normally, if you listen to some of the instruction books, they just tell you, chuck the spool in the bucket of water and wind it off. This I found to be a bit of a shit way to do it. Go on to eBay, Pick yourself up one of these things. The end screws off. There's a spring and there's a divider. The mono sits in the middle of it and then you just screw it back on. Eek. Don't want to do that. You want you need that bit. Let's try again. Spring. Pushy thing. Other pushy thing, other spring, and nut. There you go, that is it on. And you can see, it can spin. Now, you just take the sucker end and stick it to the bottom of the bucket. This way, your mono is going on to your rod wet. What wet scopes I hear you say? How will you ensure that it goes on at the proper tension? Well, this is why we are going to do another trick of the trade. You take a microfiber cloth that is wet, you then Tie yourself a little loop in the line, just a normal granny knot loop. This is how I do it. You don't have to do it like this. This is how I do it. Pull it tight. Bite the tag end off. Or use scissors if you have weak teeth. Pull the line through the loop. Take spool and pull it tight. Make sure that your knot is at the bottom of the rail. I then wind it around a few times just to kind of make it make life a bit easier for myself. <laughs>
it. A spool of line bound properly onto your reel so there's no gaps. And that is ready for the new year or new season. Now I only have another six of these reels to wind line onto. Shit. Had a real ripper of a bite as well, and I bloody missed it. Unfortunate they were refreshing, you can see by the nature of the place. Lots of big rocks. And if you're having to grind your hook lengths over big rocks and your shock leader over big lock rocks, there's a chance that everything's going to get shredded by zebra mussels. So you just have to check everything. I'm paranoid about my hook lengths. If I, the moment I see the slightest bit of damage, the hook length's changed. You know, you know, that's the last thing you want is to set the hook into a nice fish and then the hook length goes because you were too lazy to change it. But it's an absolutely cracking day. Beautiful day. Beautiful place to spend a few hours fishing, eh? A couple of guys that's plunked in beside me. I love it. The whole lake and guys fish right beside you. A few moments later. It's kind of slowed down a little bit. I just had the middle, the middle of the day, so it's kind of the hottest part of the day. I'm hoping now that the sun's kind of behind some clouds, we can get some fish again. I tried fishing at the shorter line, the 55 meter line, and it was, I wasn't getting anything. Oh, there we go, there's a bite. So I was back to the 60 meter line. Or sorry, 50 meter line and 45, not 60 meters. Just trying to So, what's happening in the world, eh? I had to cancel my Netflix. I don't fund the exploitation of children. Uh, you're probably sitting at home and wondering what the fuck am I talking about? Pardon my language. Uh, Netflix produced a series, a movie, a French movie, basically with underage little girls wearing very little dancing uh, like a stripper, twerking. And it was meant to address the sexualization of children. But in the end result, it was basically softcore child porn. I'm going to go on the record and uh, say 
if you're one of those people that find you know children attractive then i would have zero sympathy for you if you fell head first into a wood chipper in fact i think that should be a if i ever run for king of the world that's going to be one of my policies child predators go head first into a wood chipper You know, I'm so I'm a bit into free speech, and people will be saying to me, you know, well, you shouldn't be wanting to censor that movie because it could be art. That sort of weird liberal excuse to use. Well, it's not so much art; it's using a child to do a function, a performance. Children cannot consent. It would be different if it was, you know, something like My Girl where you had Macaulay Culkin, you know, doing a like, child thing. But when children are made to do things that are overtly sexual, it makes my skin crawl. Would I have said the same thing if the movie had used, you know, adults and dressed the adults over 18, you know, and dressed them up like they were youngsters? Uh, I probably wouldn't have watched the movie. Well, actually, I didn't. I haven't watched it. I don't, I don't intend to watch it. But I'm just not really keen on anybody that gets their jollies on. on hurting young children so yeah pedophiles go straight to the the wood chipper. I have no time for that sort of nonsense. The police are apparently still kneeling down for protesters. Whatever happened to the UK police? I, I don't know what's happened. I guess I was having a laugh. I read the uh, I read the Guardian newspaper. You know, I read the Guardian newspaper and I read the Daily Mail. That way, you're getting kind of the left and the right, you know, way things are the way how they're judging things. And somewhere in the middle of those two, you'd be kind of finding out what sort of honest, what was the actual thing that was happening. The, the latest demonstrations, the Extinction Rebellion people, that believe the world's going to end in 10 years, 12 years, I don't know, who's listening to them. I'm all for you having your protest. You know, I encourage protest. I protest all the time. I used to protest every Saturday night when I was getting kicked out of the pub. Protests are good. It's good for our democracy. But the moment you pick up a rock and chuck it at a policeman or pick up a spray can and spray something up a wall, that's not, demor that's not a... That's no longer a protest, that's a crime. And I always thought the police were there to deal with criminals.
clown world. We live in clown world. There we go. That's a bit better. So far today, all I've been catching is, you know, roach, skimmers. I've had a pike take a couple of roach off me. And all the pike's doing is making me think, yay, let's get the pike fishing gear out. That is actually a rod. See the way the mouth kind of goes up? Oop, calm down. The way the mouth kind of goes up like that there, that's a rod. And you can tell by the silver and the red, or the, the nice buttery gold and the red. It's been a while since I caught a rod. I used to, there used to be a really good pond not far from me and it used to have some cracking lumps of rod on it. It used to have big rod to like two pounds but as with most small venues in Northern Ireland the the visitors from Eastern Europe who came here for work found out about it and uh, well they just destroyed it. They ruined it. I've switched to a window feeder just to get some particles out there. I like the window feeders because you can actually cast, you know, you can really really whoop them to the, the horizon because of all the weights in the ass end which is great. All I'm doing Take a wee handfuls of castor, dead maggot, and particles, putting them into my ground bait, feeding them into the feeder. And when the feeder's full, I just pack it closed with the ground bait. And that's what gets thrown out. And that hits the bottom, the ground bait dissolves around it, and all the particles and maggots and casters, they puff out. If this was a solid window feeder, nothing would puff out until you lifted the rod and pulled it in but because it's like a meshed window feeder it's it acts like a normal feeder it acts like a normal window feeder or normal feeder feeder there was a bit of a crosswind you know it, it would about an hour ago there's a bit of a crosswind and it was really hacking this way for a bit it only lasted about an, about half an hour maybe three quarters of an hour but it was it was enough to throw your feeders I mean to throw on an open end feeder throwing a feeder like that there that's a 40 gram guru cage feeder guru distance cage feeder throwing that there you're casting I'm casting straight in front of me to the first windmill in the distance but with the wind hacking, it was pushing the feeder towards those trees. When I switched to the window feeder, because it's a bit more aerodynamic, when I cast normal, it was going exactly where I was wanting it to go. So, stuck with the window feeder. I'm not going hell for leather, I'm not match fishing, I'm not competing against anybody. I'm just chucking a feeder, hoping something big swims in my way. I'm kind of gutted that I lost that bream though. Just right at the net. That would have been the best fish of the day. Oh, that was a bite. See, talking to you, not concentrating. I'll just look at the tip and still talk to you. So you don't think I'm antisocial. So you're not sitting watching the back of my head for no reason. It is 
not there. And for those there, it's very small. Let's get some My suffocated maggots are just about coming back to life now. So I'm using them at the minute. That bang, somebody was doing some pew pews, shooting some shotguns. The guy's actually in a boat out there, he's going for duck. I can see him. There's two of them in a the boat. Duck hunting. A little rods kind of in the corner of my keep net here. I'll go back to fishing, then I'll chat to you later, okay? <whistles> Had another pike. Sorry, Mr. Roach, I don't think you're going to make it. Sorry, Mr. Roach, put you back in there. At least the pike spat it out. I thought I was going to get it in the net. It wasn't a particularly big pike. It was just, you know, about five or six pounds. But it just wasn't wanting to let go of the roach. Oh well. If that roach dies, it'll end up getting vacuum packed and used probably in the next couple of weeks for pike fishing. I don't waste anything. Unfortunately, sometimes when you're fishing like this, you get you get roach or perch or rud that gets smashed up by pike on the way in. You could release them, in which case they might do all right, they might survive. You have caught roach in the past that have got big scars in them, but they have had battle wounds. But if the roach goes belly up in my keep net, and is obviously dead, then there's no point releasing it. You know, I'll take it home and I'll freeze it. Nature, nature's a bitch sometimes. One hour later. That's fish number four for the pike. But on the plus side, I've broke the 30 fish barrier. Which if you've been watching my, my recent feeder fishing vlogs, that's an outstanding day. Okay, there'd be nothing huge, but it's uh, a lot better than what I was catching. Apart from that one day on Derivore Jetty where I had four, uh, 47 roach, but It has been a tough summer. The urn has not been fishing its best. In fact, it's been that bad that the uh, the festival is on this week on the urn. They've not used any river sections because the river apparently last week fished shockingly bad. So they are on the uh, 
the lower lock. They're on the lower lock today. Woohoo! 31 fish. But where was it? Oh, the, the river sections were the fish in that poor that they're not, they didn't actually use them in this week. Which tells you something about the, the river. It has been fishing rather crap, but we all knew that anyway. Any of the times I've fished it recently, it has been has been dire. I actually don't know why I didn't come here more often. You know, it's nice, it's peaceful, it's quiet. There's no boat traffic. Okay, you get some joggers and some cyclists going up and down the track behind you that want to say hello to you, but Nothing offensive, you know. In fact, it's a pretty good place to kind of sit and mind your own business, you know. Oh, yes, let's have a go. And that's what's on the bottom. We're still getting a tow that's taking it that way towards the island there. But it isn't so bad. You just have to sink your line a little bit better. And then watch the tip. Not sure what time it is, hold on, I'll check. It is five past four. Started fishing at about half past nine. And I have 31 fish. Got some nice rud, which is a surprise. Haven't caught rud in a while. So it's a welcome surprise to catch some rud. Yes, they aren't crawling up the line, but the action's been fairly constant. Hope I'm missing bites talking to you here. Being distracted by a camera, not paying attention. Two guys that were fishing above me for a pike, they left. They didn't fish that long actually. They kind of came down, chucked two floats in, and chatted on their phones for an hour. You know, it kind of makes me laugh. You know, the, the whole lake, the whole fucking loch, you know, miles and miles and miles and miles of shore, <laughs> and and people stop. Right beside you, to fish right beside you. If you hear any sudden loud bangs, do not be alarmed. There is a duck boat that's just in the next bay down there. About 10 minutes ago, it sounded like the guns in Navarone. I 
I haven't been duck shooting in ages. Kind of missed that. I should really sort myself out and go out and do some of it. There's something largely or very, 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 very satisfying about going out and hunting and then cooking what you've killed. There's something very satisfying about that. That's why I like deer stalking. Again, I haven't done that in years. I miss that too. You know, you have the Oh yes, you have the deer. And you kinda have to get up close to it without it smelling you, without it kinda because as soon as they smell you they're off. So you get the deer. And people think it's kinda cruel, you know, shooting. But you're you're hunting, you're bringing back what you've shot, you know, to feed people. It's not like you're just shooting it and leaving it there. Where are you going, Rog? Oh. We have another rod. show you the rod. Mr. Rod. Hello, hello humans. I'm kind of regretting only bringing one bottle of liquor to me. Normally I bring a couple of bottles of juice. So I might have to stop on the way home and get some hydration. I think I'll fish to about 6 o'clock maybe and then take a nice slow drive home. There's no rush. Only problem with fishing here is I have to drive through in a skill in town. And no matter what time of the day you go through in a skill in town. The traffic's always murder. So I have to do that. Unless I go the long way. Down by Balik and across that way. And whilst it is a beautifully scenic road, it's an extra <laughs> it's an extra forty miles on my journey. So no, we're going to have to cut through in a skill. Which is crap, I know, but you just have to do it. It's like one of them things, it's like when your mum used to yell at you as a kid, you have to eat your vegetables. You just have to do it. Or if you don't eat your vegetables, you're not getting no pudding. <laughs> oh, short cast. Oops. I'll let it sit there. I don't mind the odd short cast. You don't have to be pinpoint accurate when you're not match fishing. It's a beautiful place though.
great place to waste a few hours, isn't it? It's half past five. Just had number 40. I think that is enough for today. I'm going to take a slow drive home. But first, let's show you what I've caught today. It's actually quite an all right net of fish, which is a surprise for this channel. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Quite a nice bag of fish. Let's see what we got. Eight, no, seven and a half, seven and a half kilos. Seven and a half kilos. I got some nice roach, nice rod. I got one of those, nice hybrid. And I got, uh, I did get a skimmer, it's in there somewhere, so yeah. Let's put these back. So, that's the end of another angling adventure. I've had a bit of a low summer. The catch rate's not been the best. But, we're now getting on to that most exciting time of the year. It's pike angling time, baby.